हेलो एवरी वन मई नेम इज अशोक वेलकम टू अशोक ई टी इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डेवलप वन रेस्ट ए पी आई बै यूजिंग स्प्रिंग गुड एंड वी विल टेस्ट दट रेस्ट ए पी आई बै यूजिंग पोस्ट मैन ऑल राइट इफ यू आर वेरी न्यू टू द स्प्रिंग बुट ऐ सजेस्ट यू टू गो थ्रू मै स्प्रिंग बुट ट्यूटोरियल टू अंडरस्टैंड वट इज स्प्रिंग बुट हाउ स्प्रिंग बुट वर्क इंटरनली हाउ टू क्रिएट स्प्रिंग बुट अप्लीकेशन हाउ टू डिप्लॉय स्प्रिंग बुट अप्लीकेशन how to dockerize how to deploy in aws how to deploy by using jenkins all that stuff you can understand by watching this video series all right let's get started here we are going to develop one rest api by using spring boot what is spring boot as we discussed already spring boot is one approach to develop spring based applications with less configurations you can develop your application by using spring framework but you need to write configurations on your own to avoid that configurations spring boot came into picture by using spring boot we can create the application that you can just run that configurations will be taken care by spring boot spring boot introduced pom starters dependencies they have simplified to develop one web application you no need to add multiple dependencies one single pom starter web starter is sufficient if you add the web starter it will give you all the required dependencies to develop and run one web application auto configuration in the spring framework as a programmer we need to do the configurations manually what are the beans available start the ioc container create the bean objects and all but in the spring boot auto configuration introduced it will take care of the configuration which is required for our application how beautiful it is next one embedded server whenever you develop a web application to run that application we need to deploy that into server we need to download and set up that server and we need to package our application and we need to deploy our application here in the spring boot embedded server concept available that means spring boot is providing a embedded server to run our applications directly you no need to do any deployment in the external server when you go for spring boot it is having a internal server that is called embedded server or embedded container spring boot is having lot of demand to develop the web applications in the market nowadays right now by using this spring boot we are going to develop one rest api what is rest api rest api acts as an interface between two applications to exchange the information if one application wants to communicate with another application then we are going to use rest api rest api acts as a mediator between two applications for example if you take any banking application google pay phone pay and paytm net banking transactions we are doing so you are using google pay with one bank account and i'm using google pay with another bank account if you transfer money to my mobile number in the google pay the amount will be added to my account and similarly if you try to apply for a passport it will ask your aadhar number how passport application will validate your aadhar number is correct or not passport application will communicate with the aadhar application here if one application wants to communicate with another application we need a mediator that's where rest api comes into picture rest api acts as an interface between two applications to exchange the data here currently in the market lot of business applications will communicate with the third party applications or internal applications to perform several tasks let's take an example a software company wants to credit the salary to all the employees in the month end this software company will send this employees data to bank application so that bank will perform all the transaction salary credits so one application will communicate with another application to perform the operations you if you take an example of train tickets booking hotels booking and online food deliveries they are communicating one application will communicate with another application for business purpose that's where rest api comes into picture here client application will be available server application will be available they are also called as consumer application and provider application one application will provide the services to other applications that is called provider application another applications will consume the services from the application that is called consumer application provider application and consumer applications will be available now we are going to develop one provider application which will provide the services by using spring boot let's start here i'm using spring tool suit id let me create one boot project new spring starter project here i'm taking the project 
name as Spring Boot REST API. Maven build tool packaging type jar, Java version 8, language Java. Here group ID, artifact ID, version package, good. Click on next. Here, in order to create the boot application, we need starters. Those are called POM starters. In the Spring Boot, we have a starter called Web Starter. So by using this Web Starter, you can develop our REST API. Right. Now, along with this, I'm going to use the DevTools dependency. DevTools is used to restart the server when we made some code changes. Along with that, I'm going to use Lombok dependency to generate the setters getters for our binding classes. So three dependencies I'm taking. One is web starter, second one is dev tools, and third one is Lombok. Good. With this, let me create the project. Yeah, Spring Boot application is creating. Once this application got created, I will create one binding class and I will create one REST controller. Then we will test that application by using Postman. So project got created successfully. You can go to pom.xml and you can see what all the dependencies that we have added. Yeah, you can see Spring Boot version 2.7.6 and Java version 1.8. Here dependency web starter and dev tools dependency, Lombok dependency. This a test dependency is coming by default. I have not selected that. It is default dependency for the boot application. Now, in this project, to represent the data, I'm going to create one binding class. Let me create one Java class to represent the data. I'm going to take a class with a name called product. In this class, I'm writing three properties. One is private integer ID and private string name, private double price. Good. Now, here, to write the setters getters for these variables, Lombok provided one annotation called at the rate data. Along with this, I want to generate a parameterized constructor. For that, we have one annotation all aux constructor, which will generate a parameterized constructor with all arguments of this class, all the variables. When we generate a parameter constructor, zero param constructor will not be generated by the compiler. Zero param constructor will not be generated. For that, I'm going to specify no aux constructor. When you don't use all aux constructor, zero param constructor will be added by our Java compiler by default. But here, we are telling to Lombok to add the constructor with the arguments, then zero param constructor will not come. So I'm using this annotation to get that constructor. Good. So this is our binding class, which is used to represent the data. Then let's create one rest controller, product rest controller I'm creating. This rest controller will have methods which are binded to HTTP protocol request and response. We are going to deal with that methods. Here to represent this class as a rest controller, I'm using one annotation called at the rate rest controller. Then I'm writing some methods here public string save product. Now I'm going to expect product data as a parameter product P. So this save product method will get the product data in the form of JSON that data I'm going to accept from request body. For that we need to use one annotation called at the rate request body. Then this method I'm binding to a post request by using post mapping. So here I can give slash product. Right. So here, in future, we will write the logic to store the record into database table, logic to persist. But for time being, I'm not persisting that log data. I'm just printing on the console saying that the record we have received. Once the record is received, I will return a success message, return product saved like this. Good. This is a post request method, which is used to insert the product. Now, next public string get product so here i'm going to take product id as a input now let me write one get request method at the rate get mapping slash product so this method will return the product based on the id so here we don't have a database integration so just let me create one dummy product object product p is equal to new product 
by using constructor we can set the data product let me take it as id name and price right now i need to return this product as this method should return the product method return type i am taking as a product object and i am going to return p yes this method will return the product so this product id whatever the id that we are getting that id we need to represent as a path variable so for that we are going to use one annotation called at the rate path variable so if you want to make this record based on some conditions so here if p id is equal to 100 then i will return this value if p id is equal to 100 then i am going to return this product object else if p id is equal to some other value then else if if p id double equals to 101 then i am going to return some other record product p now here product p is equal to 101 let me take it as hard disk and it is 3500 here i am going to declare one product object as a local variable product p is equal to null p is equal to new product p is equal to new product finally this method will return the product object based on the given id good similarly let me write one more method which will return multiple products list of products public list of products get products get products i will create a list of products and i am going to return all the products objects as a collection so let me take it as product p1 and product p2 p1 and p2 so here mouse and hard disk i am taking now let me represent these products as a collection so by using arrays dot to list we can convert them to list object arrays dot as list p1 comma p2 it is going to give list of objects let me import java dot util dot list yeah it has given list of products now those products i'm going to return from our method return products good let me bind this method also to http method by using get mapping slash products slash product method will take a product id based on the given id it will return the record slash products method will return all the records here i'm using hard coded data in the next video we are going to see how to integrate our spring boot rest api with the database to store the data and retrieve the data so this is very simple rest api we are creating by using rest controller this is one method which is mapped to a post request it is expecting product data from the request body and this method is get product it is binded to a get request it is taking product id as input based on that it is returning the data and here we have get products method it is binded to get request with the slash products url pattern this method will return list of products all right so with this our api is ready spring boot application is ready let's run this application run as boot application run as boot application by default this spring boot application will execute in the embedded server embedded tomcat server will be given by spring boot you no need to deploy that into external servers it is having a embedded server embedded server is a tomcat that embedded tomcat server will run on the port number 8080 so tomcat started on the port number 8080 now my application is running how to test this application this application does not have any ui it is a simple a rest api to test the rest apis we are going to use postman tool I have already installed postman application so this is the postman tool here get request localhost my application running in the same machine localhost colon 8080 slash products click on send when I send a request to slash products you see the response I got the product response with 200 as a status code this is first record and this is second record two records we are getting as a response in the form of JSON my method is returning the data in the form of collection but we received the response in the form of json so when we send a request spring boot application processed our request and it converted that response into json and it sent that json response to client here our client is postman postman is sending a request to our rest api 
Suppose I want to get the product based on the ID. So I'm going to pass product ID as a path parameter. Click on send. When I send a request with the 101, I'm getting the response with that product data. Suppose if I give as 102, click on send. Now I'm going to get the response with 102. Let me check it. Oh, here 100 and 101, sorry. Here 100, I'm going to give as a input. When I give 100, I'm getting the response with 100 product data. When I give the request with 101, I'm getting the response based on the given 101. So this method is also working as expected. Then post method, how to send a post request? In order to send the post request, we need to pass the data in the request body. Send post request, URL pattern slash post. So we need to send the data. Method is expecting data in the request body, right? So here, select the request type as post. This is the URL body. In the body, we need to set the data. Body in the request body, we need to set that data. Go to body. This request does not have any body. Let me take that body, none, raw data. Give the data in the form of a JSON. Here, this is the JSON data I'm passing. Let us see our application console. Really, the data received by our application or not. Whatever the record we are sending, that record I am printing on the console by using SOP. Click on send. When we send the request to the REST API using POST, so it is giving the response as product saved. I send the data in the JSON format. Let us see our console. Yes. Whatever the data we have sent, the data received by our application, it is printing the data in the console. Client sent the data in the form of JSON. Here, method expecting the data in the form of object. Spring Boot will use message converters to convert that JSON, JSON data into Java object. Whatever the object we have received, the data we have received, converted into object, that object we are printing on the console for understanding purpose. Really, are we getting the data from the postman or not? Yes, we got the data, then we are printing that data. In future, here we will write the logic to insert the record into database. Here we will write the logic to retrieve the records from the database. I hope you understood how to develop one simple REST API by using Spring Boot. So what is the conclusion? To create the REST API, we are using one dependency called WebStarter. It is providing embedded Tomcat server. And we are using one binding class to represent our request data and response data. And we created a REST controller by using at the rate REST controller annotation. We have written three methods. One method is binded to post request. It is used to save the data. It is expecting data in the request body. One method binded to get request. It is expecting product ID as a path parameter. Based on the given ID, it is returning the product data in the JSON format. Third method, which is also binded to get request, but this method will return multiple products as a response in the form of JSON. All right. Thanks for watching this video guys so please uh, subscribe to our channel and click on bell icon to get more updates on our upcoming videos. Until then thank you bye bye we'll see you in the next video.